We are back with St. Ignatius of Loyola, getting to know him. And on this episode, have you heard about the tensions between Jesuits and Dominicans? We'll learn about the origins of this in the life of St. Ignatius. How did Ignatius respond to this suspicion about his life? And how did Paris come into the picture of the life of St. Ignatius? This and more we will learn on episode eight of St. Ignatius of Loyola, getting to know him. So before we get into it today, you know a lot of us are staying at home and we might kind of be getting bored, frustrated, and, uh, you know, we can fall into a, a, a bad state, you know, state of depression or down. So I thought before we begin today, it'd be good to get us moving. Hmm? When we are moving, when we engage in kinesthetics, that kind of changes our state. Hmm? And so I'm going to actually invite you to join me, and we're just going to skip. We're going to skip 50 times, 25 times straight forward, and 25 times kind of moving side to side. So let's go. Everybody, come on. How do you feel? I know that might feel a little silly, but once you get moving, wow, it changes your mood as well. And the other thing, it's so hot out there, so please stay hydrated, huh? All right. So let's get to it, huh? Um, today's acronym is DEEP, huh? D-E-E-P, DEEP. And that stands for, the first D is for Dominicans, huh? Because Ignatius encounters the Dominicans as he moves to a new location in Salamanca. The first E is for examine. So Ignatius came under suspicion, and so there were some series of examinations. Um, the second E is the exercises, huh? the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. These are notes that he'd been taking down about how God worked in his life and a method of helping people, you know? And so this was also under scrutiny, the spiritual exercises and its impact. And the P is for preaching, and it doubles up also for prison because during this time, Ignatius spent some time in prison. So deep, Dominicans, see if you can remember with me, <laughs> examine, so he was examined, this exercises, spiritual exercises, and P, preaching, and also prison. So last time, uh, I think we stopped at where Ignatius left Alcala, after also experiencing some time there being questioned, huh? and spent 42 days uh, in a jail or prison there. So he decides to move to Salamanca. And when he gets to Salamanca, one thing to always remember is that there are always other people who were very hospitable, who helped Ignatius either with food or with clothes. So same thing happened when he got to Salamanca. And of course, he immediately tried to find a place where he would be able to do confession and communion. And so he encountered the Dominican house in Salamanca called San Esteban, St. Stephen. And he went there to do his confession to a Dominican there. And he was only in Salamanca for about 10 to 12 days when uh, the Dominicans, after I think a confession, invited him to come to spend some time with them in the community. 
Okay, so Ignatius did. He went with one of those companions he had gathered around him, Calixto. And when they got there, they shared with him the news that their sub-prior had heard something about St. Ignatius, that around town he was preaching like one of the apostles. So they'd heard these rumors. And so, you know, they, they brought him together and they actually started to question St. Ignatius, you know. So this examination is already starting now. And so, well, they asked him, so, you know, what do you preach, St. Ignatius? And, well, he wasn't St. Ignatius, Ignatius at the time, you know. But what do you preach? And he said, well, you know, we don't really preach, but we speak familiarly about God. For instance, like after a dinner when someone has called us to their house, we'll just kind of have a conversation with them. Okay, so the Dominicans asked, so what do you say about God? And he said, you know, we talk about one virtue, praising it, and a vice, reprehending it. And so they thought, okay, um, now, you know, what else? Like, what have, you, what, what, have, what have you studied? What else have you done, you know? <laughs> and so this kind of, uh, at some point, the line of questioning kind of got to St. Ignatius, you know? Because they were, they insinuated at a point that all this stuff he's saying about God should, must be from study, or through the spirit. So which one is it? <laughs> and Ignatius wasn't really comfortable with this line of questioning. And so he kind of, you know, cause he found that a little suspicious, you know? So he says, you know, I, I don't think we should continue this conversation, you know, until I have like your superiors or someone here who can oblige me to talk about this stuff. And one of them blurted out, hey, with all these errors going around, you know, like Erasmus. Now, mind you, this was the time of the Reformation. You know, Luther had already posted the thesis and the church was in the thick of the Reformation. So this person is saying, hey, with all these errors going around, you don't want to talk anymore about what you're preaching. <laughs> so you can tell that there is sort of this brotherly tension, let me call it that, going on. You know, they don't actually let St. Ignatius go. They asked him to stay and they told him, does he want to stay in the chapel or somewhere else? So he says, sure, you know, I'll stay in the chapel. And they left him there for three days without, you know, any word about what was going on, you know. But what happened is some of the brothers in the community actually came to talk to him. And the autobiography says that they all left deeply affected, you know? So there is something about, you know, spiritual conversation, right? In the Society of Jesus, we have the name spiritual conversation where just in an encounter and in conversation, you could hopefully bring people and accompany people on the way to God. And that's, we Jesuits get that from, you know, this practice of Ignatius. So after three days, actually, in the chapel, somebody came and took St. Ignatius to an actual prison. <laughs> and they, they <laughs> Ignatius says they didn't put him in the part with all the criminals, but they put him up above. It was still in an old sort of dumpy place. And they chained him together with um, his other uh, companion, Calixto, so that, you know, they couldn't even, <laughs> if one person had to move, the other person had to move with the person as well. So it wasn't necessarily the most comfortable place. And from time to time, people continued to come in to try to question Ignatius about his life, especially about the spiritual exercises. So they asked for the notes that he wrote down so they could examine and take a look at it. And Ignatius would give them, you know. So these are some of the first times we hear about the spiritual exercises and that Ignatius had been writing all this stuff down. We hear it from the beginning, but actually now it's like he has actually made some progress on it. 
and they wanted to examine it. They also asked Ignatius, you know, if he had some other companions, you know. And of course, I think I mentioned in another episode that these are sort of the first companions before the ones that he later met in Paris with whom he formed the, the Society of Jesus. So these first companions didn't stay through the end, but he had uh, Calixto with him already, and they got Arteaga, Carceres, and another young uh, French boy called Juanico, who they all brought together. They left Juanico, he became a brother in the community, but the other two they put in the jail with the criminals, uh, but they didn't request for a lawyer anyway. And uh, well, they continued to hold them and they held them for quite a while. In the end, it was about 22 days. But before the 22 days came up, there were some doctors, you know, judges, examiners who came to talk to St. Ignatius directly, four of them, so sort of like a trial. And, you know, they had already examined the spiritual exercises, so they asked him questions about that. And even moved beyond that to ask him questions regarding the Trinity, grace, the sacraments. <laughs> so really examining him uh, thoroughly. And every time Ignatius would answer, I don't know what the doctors or the canons say, but this is my own, you know, understanding. Uh, he relates that what they even asked him about the commandments. So he started with the first commandment and he spent so much time expounding on the first commandment and all about God and serving God that after he finished, they were, they were tired. They didn't even ask him any other questions, you know. They kept insisting though on the spiritual exercises and Ignatius talking about mortal sin and venial sin, you know, so they kept pressing that. And Ignatius kind of said, hey, look, if there is some error in what I've said, then condemn it, you know, otherwise, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, and afterwards, the, the judges left, you know, without condemning him at the time, you know? Um, well, Fast forward, eventually, they brought a sentence and a judgment about St. Ignatius. They didn't really kind of make a judgment or condemnation in terms of doctrine or there was an error in it. But the one thing they said is that he should cease talking about mortal sin and venial sin and that he should even cease from all these talking about this stuff until he had studied for four years. Well, there you go. Once again, Ignatius kind of feels these obstacles in the way, and they're all coming as a result of his not having studied formally, you know? And so he was really crushed because it seems like they blocked the door to his helping souls, which was really what was at the center of his heart, you know? Um, well, Ignatius is now faced with a question. What to do now? Where is God calling me now? And, you know, it wasn't like a straight, just easy, all right, here it is. <laughs> it actually says he had, he had these two thoughts. One was kind of to travel the world, and then there was another thought of kind of going to into a strict seminary or monastery so that he could really do penances and reform his life there. So there are all these things floating in his head, and I know sometimes we are that way, we, we get confused and we're not sure where God is leading, but eventually he decided to go to do some studies and to go to Paris. Now Paris then was kind of the central hub where all of the great philosophers, great theologians uh, studied and taught, and so, Ignatius sort of thought of moving to Paris 
in order to do his studies uh, so that he could help souls eventually. So I'm going to end there for today. That's it for this episode eight. Stay tuned to learn more about what happens in Paris and how he gathers those we know as the first companions and begins with the formation of the Society of Jesus as we know it. That's been episode eight of St. Ignatius of Loyola, getting to know him.